Brought to you by wikivd.com Graham Saunis Graham James Saunis is a retired Scottish professional football player and manager who played as a midfielder. Saunis is now one of the most prominent television football pundits in the UK and Ireland, most notably through his work for Sky Sports. Saunas was the captain of the successful Liverpool team of the early 1980s, player, manager of Rangers in the late 1980s and captain of the Scotland national team. He also played for Tottenham Hotspur, Middlesbrough and Sampdoria. Saunas' managerial career began when he joined Rangers leading them to three Scottish titles and four League Cups before joining Liverpool as manager. He went on to become manager of Galatasaray, Southampton, Torino, Benfica, Blackburn Rovers and Newcastle United. Early career Saunas was brought up in the Sorton Mains area of Edinburgh and supported local side hearts and Rangers. As a teenager Saunas played for local boys club North Merkiston. Saunas' career began as an apprentice at Tottenham Hotspur under Bill Nicholson. He signed professional forms as a 15-year-old in 1968. Frustrated at a lack of first-team opportunities, the teenage Saunas reputedly informed Nicholson he was the best player at the club. Saunas made one first-team appearance for Spurs in a UEFA Cup tie as a substitute. During the summer of 1972 Saunas played in the North American Soccer League for the Montreal Olympique. He appeared in 10 of his team's 14 matches, and was named in the league's all-star team for that season. Middlesbrough Spurs sold Saunas to Middlesbrough for £30,000 in 1972. He made his first appearance for Middlesbrough on 6 January 1973 in a 2-1 league defeat to Fulham at Craven Cottage. His first goal came on the 11th of December 1973 in a 3-0 league victory over Preston North End. At Essen Park, Saunas' tenacious style began to garner acclaim during his time at Middlesbrough. His first season saw Middlesbrough finish fourth two places, and 14 points short of promotion. Jack Charlton was appointed Middlesbrough manager, his first managerial post in May 1973. One of Charlton's first signings was experienced former Celtic midfielder Bobby Murdoch a fellow Scot whom Saunas later cited as an important influence in the development of his playing style. Promotion as champions of the second division followed in 1973-74. Saunas' influence was demonstrated when he scored a hat-trick in the season's final fi fixture, an 8-0 victory over Sheffield Wednesday. Liverpool Saunas' playing career is best remembered for his seven seasons at Liverpool, where he won five league championships, three European Cups and four League Cups. Saunas' time at Anfield began in 1978 as a replacement for veteran Ian Callaghan. After winning his first European Cup in 1977, Liverpool manager Bob Paisley sought reinforcements by signing three Scottish players all of whom were to contribute substantially to further success. Central defender Alan Hansen arrived from Partick Thistle for £110,000. Kenny Dalglish an established Scottish international signed from Celtic for a then British record fee of £440,000. Saunas formed the final part of the Scottish triumvirate leaving Middlesbrough in acrimonious circumstances for a club record fee of £350,000 on 10 January 1978. Saunas' Liverpool debut came in a 1-0 league victory over West Bromwich Albion at the Hawthorns on 14 January 1978, his first goal a characteristic volley just inside the penalty box. Eventually awarded fans goal of the season came in a 3-1 win 
over bitter rivals Manchester United at Anfield on 25 February 1978. Saunas played a critical role in Liverpool's retention of the European Cup against FC Bruges at Wembley Stadium providing the pass for Kenny Dalglish to score the match-only goal. Sustained success followed. Saunas' first league title medals were won in seasons 1978-79 and 1979-80. A second European Cup medal for Saunas arrived in 1981 with a 1-0 victory over Real Madrid the culmination of a campaign in which Saunas scored a hat-trick in the quarter-final against CSKA Sofia. This burst of success prompted Paisley to award Saunas the club captaincy for season 1981-82. To the chagrin of the incumbent Phil Thompson who had made some errors that season and with whom Paisley had a vicious row during one match at Aston Villa, Thompson initially refused to speak to Saunas claiming he had stolen the captaincy from behind his back. This was the start of several long-running feuds between the two robust characters and over the coming years they would confront each other in various circumstances. Under Saunas captaincy two trophies followed as Liverpool regained the league championship and retained the League Cup trophies that were successfully defended in season 1982-83. Saunas relinquished his right as captain to lift the League Cup at Wembley after the 2-1 win over Manchester United in 1983 insisting Paisley collected the trophy in his retirement season. In 1983-84 Saunas lifted three trophies. He scored the winning goal in a League Cup final replay at Main Road against Merseyside rivals Everton, the first all Merseyside Cup final. Liverpool won the league title for the third consecutive season and reached the 1984 European Cup final after beating Romanian champions Dynamo Bucharesti in the semi final 3 1 on aggregate in an ill tempered first leg at Anfield. Saunas broke the jaw of Dynamo captain LICA Movilla which went unpunished by the referee. Liverpool on the European Cup final after a penalty shootout win over Roma, with Saunas scoring one of the penalties in the shootout. Saunas' Liverpool career ended in 1984 after 358 appearances and 56 goals. Sam Doria Saunas left Liverpool in 1984 joining Sam Doria for a fee of £650,000. Saunas, an England international Trevor Francis a player at the Genoa-based club, since 1982 added experience to an emerging group of future Italian internationals, including Roberto Mancini, Pietro Virchowod and Gianluca Vialli, in his first season. Sam Doria won the Coppa Italia with a 3-1 victory over Serie A rivals Milan securing the trophy for the first time in club history. Rangers Saunas' career in Italy ended in 1986 as he took up the position of player-manager at Rangers. His playing career at Ibrox began inauspiciously. His competitive debut in the opening match of the 1986-87 season against Hibernian in his hometown of Edinburgh saw him sent off after two yellow cards in the first 34 minutes. Saunas later self-deprecatingly argued that his second booking for a foul on George McCluskey had been awarded because my boot ran up his leg disciplinary problems something that had recurred periodically throughout Saunas' career, resurfaced on a number of occasions during his time as a player at Rangers, and the spell was also blighted by injury. He made 73 appearances in total for Rangers, scoring three goals before retiring as a player in 1991 at age 38. His final appearance as a player was at Ibrox in a 2-0 victory over Dunfermline Athletic in Rangers' last home match of the 1989-90 season, 
when he brought himself on for the final 20 minutes. International career While a Middlesbrough player Soundness received his first international cap for Scotland on 30 October 1974 in a 3-0 friendly victory over East Germany at Hampton Park. By the time Soundness was selected by manager Ally McLeod for the Scotland squad, for the 1978 FIFA World Cup in Argentina he had been awarded only six caps. His move to Liverpool and a greatly increased profile saw growing demands for the award of regular place. A defeat and a draw in Scotland's first two World Cup group stage fixtures against Peru and Iran saw calls for soundness recovered from injury to play in the critical final group match against the Netherlands, replacing an established midfield soundness contributed to a 3-2 victory that nevertheless saw Scotland eliminated from the tournament on goal difference. Soundness played in two further World Cups, the first in 1982 in Spain, saw soundness play all three group stage matches. His first international goal arrived in the final game prior to elimination a 2-2 draw with the Soviet Union in Malaga. A final World Cup appearance came in 1986 in Mexico at a time when Saunas had already been appointed Rangers player manager. Saunas played in defeats to Denmark and West Germany. He later said he had performed poorly in those matches having struggled with a high altitude and losing a significant amount of weight and power. Saunas was omitted by caretaker manager Alex Ferguson for Scotland's final match against Uruguay. Saunas claimed in his autobiography The Management Years and press interviews that this was the only time in his whole career he had been dropped. Saunas also stated Ferguson was unusually apologetic and was very respectful and diplomatic in his conversation with Saunas at night when he broke the news to him. As he held Saunas in high regard, Saunas' Scotland career ended after the 1986 World Cup. He had made 54 appearances in almost 12 years, scoring four goals. Rangers Saunas was appointed Rangers' first player manager in April 1986, signing from Sampdoria for a fee of £300,000 and succeeding Jock Wallace. Financed initially by the club's then-owner, Lawrence Marlborough Saunis, and club chairman David Holmes embarked upon a bold strategy of reclaiming the footballing. Ascendancy Rangers had been desperately seeking in Scotland after years in the wilderness due to the dominance of arch-rivals Celtic and the emergence of the new firm of Aberdeen and Dundee United. Saunas' appointment as Rangers manager garnered most attention, but his arrival as a player was also of significance. Saunas arrived at Ibrox, with a reputation as one of Europe's leading midfielders a view evidenced by his success at Liverpool and to a lesser extent with Sam Doria. His signing was unusual in that Scottish clubs had rarely been able to sign top-quality internationals including Scots from other leagues. What came popularly to be termed the Soundness Revolution began with Islau who have major signings from English clubs. Significantly, this reversed the historic pattern of Scotland's most able footballers playing in England. Soundness first season saw the arrival of players such as Terry Butcher captain of Ipswich Town and an established England international and Chris Woods of Norwich City, England's second-choice goalkeeper. Subsequent seasons saw the arrival of other English internationals such as Trevor Stephen, Gary Stevens, Trevor Francis and Ray Wilkins. Saunis was able to offer the lure of European club competition at a time 1985-1990 when English clubs were banned from Europe in the wake of the Hazel Stadium disaster. Rangers profited from this by embarking upon a signing policy which drew on the relative wealth to compete for the first time directly with England's most powerful clubs. 
Saunis revitalised Rangers quickly began to dominate Scottish football. In his first season, 1986-87 they won the Championship and the League Cup defeating Celtic 2-1 in the final. They retained the League Cup in 1987-88 defeating Aberdeen on penalties after extra time. Two more championships were to follow this time in successive seasons, and a further two League Cup victories over Aberdeen 3-2 in 1988-89 and Celtic 2-1 in 1990-91. In 1991 Saunis left Rangers to take over as manager of Liverpool. He was replaced by his assistant Walter Smith four matches prior to the end of what was to become another championship winning season. Sauna's time at Ibrox was marked by persistent controversy. His most noteworthy act was the controversial signing of Mo Johnston in 1989. Rangers, historically a team supported by Protestants were widely held to have implemented for most of the 20th century a policy of refusing to sign Roman Catholics. Although there had been many Rangers players of Catholic faith, particularly before the sectarian divisions hardened after World War I, none of them were as high profile as Johnston. It was also significant because Johnston, a former Celtic player and coveted Scottish international had days earlier at a press conference at Celtic Park publicly announced his decision to return to his former club. Sauna stated that religion was not an issue for him, his first wife was a Catholic, and the children from that marriage were baptized Catholic. His main consideration was that Johnston was a good player, but he also believed that the signing would damage Celtic. Further controversy centered on Sauna's dealings with the Scottish Football Association and Scottish League hierarchies, a succession of confrontational after-match comments pitched Saunus regularly at loggerheads with both organisations, prompting touchline bans which Saunus circumvented in characteristically provocative fashion, by naming himself as a substitute allowing access as a player to the dugout. In May 1990, Saunus was fined £5,000 by the SFA, for breaching a touchline ban after television pictures showed him in the tunnel area yelling at his players on the pitch. Saunis was later to claim conflict with officialdom was one of the principal factors precipitating his departure from Ibrox. In 2009, Saunis said of his time as Rangers manager when I look back on my actions and antics at Ibrox I bordered on being out of order. I was obnoxious and difficult to deal with. He was manager during 261 matches in all competitions for Rangers, winning 125 of 193 league fixtures. Liverpool manager Kenny Dalglish, who had played alongside Saunas at Liverpool, resigned as Liverpool manager in February 1991. Coach Ronnie Moran was put in temporary charge following Dalgleish's sudden resignation, but he did not want the job permanently. Saunas was appointed Liverpool manager. Having signed a five-year contract on 16 April, Saunas' appointment came just before Liverpool finished second to Arsenal in the race for the 1990-91 league title. He made a major reorganisation of the squad for the following season, bringing in Dean Saunders for a national record of £2.9 million as well as defenders Mark Wright and Rob Jones and midfielder Mark Walters. He also gave a regular place in the team to 19-year-old midfielder Steve McManaman, whose debut had come under Dalglish in December 1990 and near the end of that campaign he gave a professional contract to youth team striker Robbie Fowler. During the early stages of the 1991-92 season, Liverpool were looking like serious title contenders, but it soon became an effective two-horse race between Manchester United and Leeds United. Leeds eventually took the title while Liverpool came sixth. 
They returned to European competition that season after six years of isolation following the Hazel disaster of 1985 and reached the UEFA Cup quarter-finals where they were eliminated by Genoa. Saunas had major heart surgery in April 1992. A controversy arose after the FA Cup semi-final against Portsmouth which Liverpool needed a replay and penalties to win. In the event of a victory for Liverpool an interview was due to be published in the Sun a British tabloid with Saunas celebrating the win and his own successful surgery. The photograph which accompanied the interview was of Saunas in his hospital ward kissing his girlfriend with joy at his own recovery and his team's win. The interview was due to go in alongside the match report on 14 April 1992 but the late end to the game meant the deadline for publication was missed and the report with interview and photograph went in on 15 April instead the third anniversary of the Hillsborough disaster which had claimed the lives of 95 fans. Liverpool fans reacted with fury after seeing the interview was conducted with The Sun, a newspaper which had been boycotted by many people in Liverpool for the intervening years. Over its reporting of the events at Hillsborough, Saunas himself had restricted Liverpool players from talking to The Sun. Although he apologised at the time, Saunas has since said that he probably should have resigned there and then. Saunas attended the 1992 FA Cup final which Liverpool won 2-0 against Sunderland. Against the advice of his doctors, 1992-93 was an even more frustrating season for Saunas. Just after the start of the season he sold Dean Saunders to Aston Villa. While Saunders was a key player in Villa's near-successful title challenge, his successor Paul Stewart proved to be perhaps the biggest flop to play under Saunis. At Liverpool scoring just one league goal from 32 appearances over the next two seasons, and missing many games through injury, Ian Rush was having a torrid time in front of goal, and Liverpool spent most of the season in the bottom half of the table. They entered March still only in 15th place but an excellent final quarter of the season, in which Rush scored 11 Premier League goals saw them finish 6th. The fans were running out of patience with Saunas but he made one last attempt at revitalising Liverpool by signing defender Julian Dix and striker Nigel Clough for the 1993-94 season. The season began well enough but a dismal run of form in early winter effectively ended hopes of the Premier League title, and Saunas resigned as Liverpool manager at the end of January 1994, when Liverpool had suffered a shock FA Cup exit at the hands of Bristol City. He was succeeded by coach Roy Evans. Saunas' reign as Liverpool manager was not remembered with fondness by the club's fans though there were some positive events. Apart from guiding them to FA Cup success in 1992 he also oversaw the breakthrough of three young players who would go on to be a key part in Liverpool's better performances over the next five years, Steve McManaman, Robbie Fowler and Jamie Redknapp allowing them to play and develop in the first team, where they went on to become highly successful club players for Liverpool though their international careers were largely disappointing. In 1992, Saunas had also brought in David James as an eventual successor to Bruce Grobelaar, and although James' fortunes at Anfield were mixed he later went on to enjoy better fortunes elsewhere and was still keeping goal for England. At the end of the following decade as he approached his 40th birthday, Saunas later claimed in his autobiography the management years that he faced an uphill struggle from day one for a number of reasons. The majority of key players were around or over age 30, such as Ian Rush, John Barnes, Peter Beardsley, Steve McMahon, Ray Horton, Jan Mulby, Ronnie Whelan, Steve Nicol and Bruce Grobelar, many of whom had testimonials during his time in charge. 
He knew they had eventually to be replaced and he doubted some of their desire. He claims in his book the senior players also appeared not to want to listen to him and may have resented his disciplinarian approach to their behavior, and also claimed a number of players including Beardsley and McMahon asked for improved terms in their contracts so they would move elsewhere. In the end Beardsley McMahon and Horton were sold seemingly before quality replacements were found, and these key components of Kenny Dalglish's last great side were not adequately replaced. Saunas claimed Ian Rush and Ray Horton had also demanded to know why new signings like Mark Wright were earning more money than them, despite not yet having won any trophies. Saunas also claims Liverpool chief executive Peter Robinson at the time had warned him this was a Liverpool team in decline, and that they only had one player who was still great John Barnes. Saunas was left disappointed by Barnes as he was at this time frequently suffering from injuries, and in particular suffered a ruptured Achilles tendon which was to eventually affect his acceleration therefore affecting his playing style, and not giving Saunas what he wanted from a vintage Barnes at his peak which was what he saw as a devastating winger with pace and goal-scoring touch. He had also claimed Barnes was once the best player in Britain but unfortunately only saw flashes of his brilliance. Rumours about squabbles in the dressing room between the players and Saunas were rife, with Ian Rush famously telling a Sky Sports interviewer that teacups being thrown were nothing new. Saunas also fell out with fellow Anfield legends and former teammates Tommy Smith and Phil Thompson during his time in charge at Anfield. In his autobiography Soundness claims Thompson, the reserve team manager, was overheard angrily criticizing his tactics and purchases behind his back. This was overheard by Manchester United assistant manager Brian Kidd and relay to Walter Smith who was so alarmed by Thompson's behaviour that he drove from Scotland to Liverpool to tell Saunas what had been said. Saunas dismissed Thompson as a result, and the two have remained bitter towards each other since, with Thompson claiming in his own book he would never speak to Saunas again as a result. Saunas claimed he had a number of spats as a Liverpool player with Thompson including in 1981 when Thompson initially refused to speak to Saunas for a while after he lost the captaincy. To him, Thompson had accused Saunas to his face and in front of the other Liverpool players of stealing the captaincy behind his back. They also had an argument and physical fight which took place after Thompson had accused Saunas of marrying his first wife, Danielle, only because she was wealthy. Saunas believed these incidents may have contributed to Thompson's hostility and disrespect of him. Tommy Smith had been strongly criticizing Saunas in the local media at the time, and he had been caught mixing with the players and some of the coaches at Anfield despite no longer having an official position at the club. Saunas banned Smith from the club areas and said that in his last phone call with Tommy Smith instructing him not to hang around the official club areas he was certain he had made an enemy for life. Galatasaray After leaving Liverpool Soundness was out of work for over a year despite reports at the end of the 1993-94 season linking him with a return to Middlesbrough as manager, a job which went to Brian Robson instead. Saunas went to manage Galatasaray in Turkey in June 1995 and again managed a court controversy with local issues, nearly sparking a riot after placing a large Galatasaray flag into the center circle of the pitch of arch-rivals Fenerbahce after Galatasaray had beaten them in the Turkish Cup final on 24 April 1996. The iconic image of the victor planting the flag drew comparisons with Turkish hero Ula Bartli Hassan who was killed as he planted the Ottoman flag at the end of the siege of Constantinople. 
This earned Saunus the nickname Ula Bartley Saunus. Southampton Saunus then returned to England to manage Southampton but after one season he resigned, citing differences with chairman Rupert Lowe. Saunus is perhaps best remembered at Southampton for signing Senegalese player Ali Dia, supposedly on the recommendation of former FIFA World Player of the Year and former Liberian striker George Ware. Saunas did not check any of Diaz's supposed credentials, and this subsequently proved to be a hoax instigated by Diaz's agent. When Diaz made his sole appearance in the Premier League as a substitute for Matt Letizia, he performed amazingly poorly and was later substituted himself. The Saints managed to avoid relegation from the Premier League in Saunas' only season as manager finishing 16th but he resigned towards the end of May 1997. Within days it was reported Everton. Liverpool's local rivals were interested in appointing Saunas as manager to succeed Joe Royal. But this never occurred. Torino After his stint at Southampton, Saunas went back to Italy to become the coach at Torino. When he arrived it was clear he would have no say in what players he could buy or sell, as the club's owner made those decisions. Saunas lasted just four months before being dismissed. Benfica In 1997 Saunas was signed by Benfica's new chairman João Alvaeli Azevedo who promised to return the club to its former glory. The Scottish manager brought several British players from the Premier League including defenders Steve Harkness and Gary Charles, midfielders Michael Thomas and Mark Pembridge and forwards Dean Saunders and Brian Dean, as well as refusing to sign emerging talent Deco. One and a half years later Saunas left the club and stated Vaily as a Verdo lies when he looks in the eyes. Be careful this man is dangerous. All of Benfica's British footballers including the previously signed left-back Scott Minto also left the club. Blackburn Rovers Saunas then became manager of Blackburn Rovers earning promotion back to the Premier League in his first full season. During his four-year spell at Blackburn, he initially got the very best out of talented youngsters such as Damien Duff, David Dunn, and Matt Jansen, brought Henningberg back to the club and signed big-name players like Andy Cole, Two Guy Kerry, Mogley, Brad Friedel and Dwight York. Cole and Jansen scored in Blackburn's 2-1 League Cup victory over Tottenham Hotspur in 2002. Saunas then guided Blackburn to a top-six finish before a disappointing final season in 2003-04 in which the club struggled, although they avoided relegation. After less than one month of the following season, many Blackburn fans had begun to express grave doubts in Saunas' handling of the club. His authoritarian methods had led to the alienation and departure of York, Cole Dunberg, and Keith Gillespie. Although Saunas could not be blamed for the long-term loss of Matt Jansen, to a motorbike accident to Damien Duff's departure to Chelsea for £17 million. These players were not sufficiently replaced in the transfer market. Vratislav Gresko, Lorenzo Amoruso and £6.75 million signing Corrado Grabby were all flops for Blackburn while Stephen Reid and Brett Emerton were also disappointing although they both improved for Blackburn after Saunas departure. Newcastle United Saunas left Blackburn in 2004 to become manager of Newcastle United. Despite a promising start to his role with results back-to-back -back, Saunas quickly fell out with a number of players including Welsh international Craig Bellamy who left the club to join a Saunas former employers. Blackburn after being farmed out on loan to Celtic, Laurent Robert Olivier Bernard, and Jermaine Genus are also believed to have left the club on bad terms with Saunas. 
The club finished 14th in the league and despite making it to the quarter-finals of the UEFA Cup and the semi-finals of the FA Cup, Saunas found himself under mounting pressure from Toon supporters. Newcastle began the 2005-06 season in poor form, but Saunas was hoping that the purchase of Michael Owen from Real Madrid on 30 August for an estimated club record fee of £17 million would help to turn the club's fortunes around. Newcastle recorded a win in the Tyne Weir derby against Sunderland and went on to win their next three matches keeping three clean sheets. Saunas seemed to be tightening up Newcastle in defence, with six clean sheets in Newcastle's first 12 games of the season as many as the whole of the preceding campaign. His decision to reform the former England striker duo Alan Shearer and Michael Owen initially appeared shrewd. However, to soundness in the club's misfortune, Owen cracked the fifth metatarsal of his right foot when he clashed with England teammate Paul Robinson during a 2-0 defeat at Tottenham on 30 December 2005 and was out of action for three months, adding to the club's injury woes. Criticism of Saunas' apparent lack of long-term planning, centered on a threadbare squad and a consequent vulnerability to injury. Expensive signings such as Jean Allen Boomsong for £8 million and Albert Luque for £10 million failed to make an impression. By the end of his reign as Newcastle boss, Saunas was deeply unpopular with the Newcastle fans as evidenced by the frequency and vociferousness of Saunas' Ut chants. By the beginning of February 2006, Newcastle United were placed 15th in the Premier League table and sliding dangerously towards a relegation battle despite the spending of £50 million. Since Saunis' arrival, results were not going in United's favour, and sports media consistently questioned his position at the club. On 2 February 2006, Saunis was sacked as manager by chairman Freddie Shepard and replaced by United's Youth Academy director Glenn Roder. In the club's DVD season review for the 2005-06 season goalkeeper Shea Given, and defender Robbie Elliott acknowledged Saunas was under pressure at the club as a result of injuries to the squad and admitted some players were to blame for their lack of all-round effort but also admitted there was a bad atmosphere at the training ground with Saunas seeming to favour some players over others. Alan Shearer acknowledged the fans never really accepted Saunas as well as several injuries being instrumental in damaging the team's confidence. Chairman Freddie Shepard declared it was the team's formation and loss against Manchester City that promoted his decision to sack Saunis. In May 2008, Saunis was named by newspaper Observer Sport Monthly as the worst football manager, citing his failings at Newcastle and Liverpool as the main reasons. Stevens Inquiry In the report of the Stevens Inquiry into Football Corruption published in June 2007, Saunas was criticized for or an apparent lack of consistency. Saunas issued a statement denying any wrongdoing. The Stevens Inquiry then issued a clarification. In July 2007, Newcastle United was raided by the City of London police who were investigating transfer deals involving Newcastle Rangers and Portsmouth. Two soundless transfers, Jean Allen Boomsong and Amdi Fay, were among the list of 17 transfers not cleared by Quest. The Boomsong deal in particular was so odd that it was widely commented upon at the time. Four months after succeeding Sir Bobby Robson as manager, Saunas was in his first transfer window as Newcastle manager. At £8.2 million, Boomsong was his first big signing, and Saunas said he would replace Jonathan Woodgate in the Newcastle defence, which had conceded several leads earlier in the season. Newcastle were well aware of Boomsong prior to his move from Oaks Air. 
to Rangers on a free transfer. Robson had travelled to France to watch him, but he declined the opportunity to sign Boom Song. Liverpool were also interested in signing Boom Song. Robson's doubts were confirmed when Boom Song marked Alan Shearer in a pre-season game against Rangers. Shearer came off to speak in dismissive terms about the Frenchman's lack of physique, and he later mentioned Boom Song's previous availability on a free transfer on television. When Boom Song was given a torrid time by DJ Campbell, during his Newcastle debut against Yedding in the FA Cup doubts over the wisdom of the transfer mushroomed. The agent in the Boom Song and Faye transfers was Willie Mackay. On 7 November 2007, Quest issued the following statement about Mackay's dealings. Media work Saunas has appeared as a television analyst in the UK and Ireland regularly. Since his managerial ended, he is currently one of the main analysts on Sky Sports coverage of the Premier League, regularly appearing on the Super Sunday programme featuring the biggest head-to-head -head matches, and was one of the main pundits used on the UEFA Champions League coverage until they lost the rights in 2015. Saunas now also works for TV3 in Ireland and Bain Sports in Qatar mainly during international summer tournaments and Champions League game weeks. He also appears on Sky Sports coverage of the League Cup and Scotland internationals. Saunas previously featured on RTE's live coverage of the UEFA Champions League, and on their highlights show Premier Soccer Saturday covering the Premier League. He was also regularly seen covering RTE's coverage of Republic of Ireland football internationals. Saunas contributed to RTE Sports coverage of the 2010 FIFA World Cup alongside John Giles, Eamon Dunphy, Liam Brady, Ronnie Whelan, Dennis Herwin, Ossie Ardiles and Dietmar Hammond. For the duration of the group stage, during analysis of the World Cup match between Ghana and Serbia on 13 June 2010 Saunas made a controversial rape comment involving Nemanja Vidic and Fernando Torres live on air commenting Vidic got raped, sorry taken apart by Torres. At Liverpool, which forced RTE to censor soundness and publicly apologise after a commercial break. Possible returns to management In June 2006 the chairman of Crystal Palace, Simon Jordan claimed he wished to discuss with Saunas a role in managing the club following the departure of Ian Dowie. However, no contract materialised. Saunas looked to be the front-runner for the Bolton Wanderers manager's job following the departure of his former Liverpool teammate, Sammy Lee in October 2007 but later pulled out of the running. When it became apparent the job was set to be given to Gary Megson. At around the same time, Saunas was linked with taking over the Republic of Ireland national team. In January 2008, Saunas announced he would be willing to return to Newcastle United as manager. Following the departure of Sam Allardyce and the arrival of the club's new ownership and board, however, United only interviewed Harry Redknapp and Kevin Keegan for the position, with Keegan soon after being appointed with the job. Saunas' interest has never been publicly acknowledged by the club. Following the sacking of Blackburn Rovers manager Paul Lins on 16 December 2008, Saunas was heavily linked with a return to the club as manager. However, Sam Allardyce was appointed as the new manager on 17 December after Saunas claimed to have had no contact at all from Blackburn about the position. Following the sacking of Middlesbrough manager Gareth Southgate on 21 October 2009, Saunas was one of the names linked with a vacant manager's position. Gordon Strachan became the new manager, having been linked with the Scotland national team in November 2009. Saunas stated he has no desire to return to management at any level.
on Monday Night Football on 25 April 2016. Saunas also reiterated his desire to stay at Sky Sports and has no desire to return to management. Bid for Wolverhampton Wanderers In January 2007 it was reported by the Daily Mirror that Saunas was heading a £20 million consortium to take over EFL Championship Club Wolverhampton Wanderers. He attended a Wolves game as a VIP guest and made a formal offer for the club asking to see the club's finances. The bid was rejected by the Wolves board which felt it undervalued the club. Saunas did not make a repeat offer for the club and it was later sold to another investor. Biographies In 1985 Saunas wrote an autobiography called No Half Measures. In 1999, he wrote another book chronicling his post-playing career up to and including his spell at Southampton entitled Saunis, The Management Years. Private Life Saunis' first wife was Danielle Wilson, they met in 1982 and married in 1984. He adopted her young daughter as his own and later had three children together. However, they separated in 1989 and divorced later. Saunas has been married to Karen Saunas, his second wife since 1994. Together, the couple have a son and Saunas has two stepchildren. From Karen's previous relationship, his stepdaughter Lauren works at Al Jazeera as a sports presenter. In 2010 Sauna sold the family home in Collington to Fred Goodwin and moved to a newly developed property in Sandbanks Pool Dorset. Political views Sauna's political views have at various points in his career generated comment. In 1982 Saunas and teammate Sammy Lee made cameo appearances as themselves in an episode of the BBC's Liverpudlian drama series Boys from the Black Stuff. Written by Alan Bleasdale the series offered a critique of Thatcherism, and in particular the large-scale unemployment then evident in urban Britain apparently at odds with Saunas' own conservative politics. In 2007 in the lead-up to elections, to the Scottish Parliament Saunas was one of 15 prominent current and former footballers named in a newspaper advertisement as opponents of Scottish independence. Personal honours Inducted into the Scotland national football team Roll of Honour in 1985, when he gained his 50th international cap in 1998. Saunas was included in the Football League 100 Legends list. A poll of 110,000 Liverpool supporters 100 players who shook the cop saw Saunas place the ninth most popular player in the club's history. Saunas has been inducted into the English Football Hall of Fame, the Scottish Football Hall of Fame and the Rangers FC Hall of Fame. A summary of Sauna's personal achievements are as follows in chronological order. Brought to you by wikivd.com Would you like to know more?